Sup Forkers, it's Matty Worldwide for Ordinary Forks, and this is bite two of episode three. It's rhubarb season. In this bite, we're going to mix a bunch of stuff with a bunch of other stuff and put it in the oven, and we're going to come up with some deliciousness. I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing, and I'm going to give you the basis for why you should do it. If you want to keep hearing this, let's go. We're back in the kitchen. Now, a little disclaimer. It's not every week I'm going to have a recipe or I'm going to have a, you know, a, a learning session. Sometimes I might even combine them. Today's that day. What I'm going to do is talk about a, a, a plant that we're, we're hosting all week, rhubarb. We're going to make a, a nice little cookie with it. We're going to add some lemon. We're going to add some rosemary. I'm going to tell you how to do it. But it's also important for me to talk to you about why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, it's, it's one thing to know about that you got to have sugar and butter and flour, but it's another reason to know why you need sugar in the butter before the flour, before the lemon, so on and so forth. Alright, so follow along. We're going to cut to a voiceover, cut back to me. We're going to do a little zoom in, zoom out, some transitions and all that good stuff. And at the end, you're going to be a little bit smarter on how to use rhubarb to make something you might not have thought of before. All right, let's get baking, let's get mixing, and let's get cutting. Song. Woo! The hand washes on. The hand washes on. Wash your hands. Hand washes on. But seriously, make sure to wash your hands. Um, keep it clean. Take care of yourself. Now, uh, rhubarb leaf is in two parts. We have the top, top leaf and the bottom stalk. For the purpose of this recipe, we want to separate that top leaf from the bottom stalk. It does no good for us. As with all produce, whether it comes from your garden, whether it comes from your neighbor's garden like this, or whether it comes from the grocery store, wash it real good and thorough. You want to get all that dirt off there. Make sure to preheat your oven before you start prepping. This way you avoid all the screw-ups old Maddie's made over the years, waiting to preheat till after he's done. All right, let's start breaking down this rhubarb. Now, rhubarb is a member of the celery family. So it shares a lot of the same common characteristics in how you cut it, how you dice it, and then how you soak it in water after you're done to keep it nice and crisp for use in baking. So you'll see here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to break it down. And it's been a while since I was professional, but, uh, you know, so don't judge me too hard on the knife skills. There you go. After I'm all done, I let it soak in some water, keep it nice and crispy, so that when I get ready to bake, it's, it's nice and fresh for me. Alright, let's start zesting up this lemon. While I would recommend a hand zester, we here at Ordinary Forks do not expect you to have the uh, best equipment. So, use what you got, if, even if it is a cheese grater with a zesting attachment. Doesn't work so well, but it gets the job done as you can see. Now take those lemons you had left over from the zesting and get all that juice out of there. Work it out of the pulp. Remember, you got washed hands, so it's okay. Don't need a juicer to get the juice. Presenting the twist to this recipe, the rosemary. Now here you go, we're gonna have to break down both sprigs of this and chop it all up. 
One of the things I love about rosemary in this recipe is that it reminds me of the times I spend in Italy, or basically anywhere in the Mediterranean. You know, you, you go up and down the coastline and you just see beautiful lemon trees and plant rosemary plants everywhere and they combine them in their drinks, their recipes, and it's just a wonderful addition to a cookie that already has enough delicious tartness. Last things last, drain that rhubarb, that nice crispy rhubarb, and let's get ready to bake. First thing I'm doing when I'm making a cookie is I gotta cream the butter and the sugar. Now what this does is help to trap air cells in the dough to keep your cookies nice, light, and fluffy. See, your boy likes to lick the sugar and the butter before he puts the egg in. Some people don't mind. I'm a little paranoid about it. What are you gonna do? I make sure with all my dry ingredients, I whip them up with a little hand mixer before uh, I fold them back into my cream, butter, and sugar so I can get the uh, consistency right when I'm doing all this. Now. This order may also be off, but I'm going from memory and this is probably the sixth time I've baked anything. Some people say to gently fold this in um, and, and make it the last step. I'm a jag off, so I folded it in with a hand mixer because I'm a brute. This is where I'm gonna finish it up strong, throwing that zest, throwing the juice, throwing the rosemary, throwing the rhubarb, and whip it all up with a hand mixer. Again, I might not be so technically sound when it comes to bacon, but I'll leave that up for somebody else's video series. This is for the ordinary forks, and I'm ordinary like everybody else. All right, let's distribute this mixture and get these suckers in the oven. We already have our oven preheated to 350, so set that timer for 13 to 15 minutes and let's go. Now, I hope none of my serious bacon forks, you know, hit me up too hard on this. You know, I, I was just looking to make sure I had a nice brown bottom, a well-baked cookie, and something delicious I could give you. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Lemon. A little rosemary. A little rhubarb. Not overly sweet. That's a cookie. Alright, now that's how you make cookies. And I'd like to thank y'all for joining me on this on this bite. I showed you how to try something a little different with a with a with a cookie, with the with the humble cookie. But I was, I was able to kind of explain why you do what you do when you do it in the process of making a cookie, right? For me, that's important. I got way too many things out there on the internet just showing people the recipe, but not really explaining the whys, the whats, the wheres, and the hows, all right? So for this bite, for this episode, I'm Maddie Worldwide. I'll see you on Friday for a little Friday relaxation and small business showcase. We'll recap the week, we'll have, a, we'll have a drink, we'll get ready to enjoy our weekend. I'm gonna eat some of these cookies. So the motto around here is, it ain't gotta be pretty, but we can damn sure make it good. This is Ordinary Forks, and if you see the chair in front of my house, don't take the parking spot. Peace out, Yenzers.